All right, 7.30, we'll call the meeting to order. I think we have a short one tonight. Um, why don't we start, start with uh, Nick DePatty. Hey, Nick, how you doing? Come on up, sit down. So you're working on the Eagle Scout project? Yes. Excellent. So what are you looking at doing? I'm, I'm looking at if you need a laser pointer. Oh, sure. I've got one here okay. for you. And the, Thank you. Yeah, it's right at the tip. What troop are you in, first of all? Troop four. Troop four. Okay. Yes. Uh, and I was planning on doing my trail on Burkala Trail. Um, the project, which I'll outline more later, uh, it mainly revolves around uh, this area, for like around Franklin Road and Cross Street. Uh, and it's re really close to Burke Hollow Lane, hence the name. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, another neighborhood that's close to it is Hawthorne Lane, if you know where that is. Uh, so it's really close to Ashland. Right, yep. Right yeah. on the line, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's uh, the proposed trail that uh, Halt actually gave me this map because I'm working with Halt. Halt was the one that actually uh, assigned this project to me or it asked for me to help with this project. And as you can see, the trail, it never actually goes past the line. There's a dotted line right there. That's the town line right there, and the trail never actually crosses it, which means I don't have to deal with Ashland at all. And uh, I'm going to try and minimize my impact on the wetlands over here, as you can see. Uh, I know this is just a rough drawing. Uh, there's a more official more official map in uh, the next, next page right here. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a vernal pool right there, there, and there. And I'm going to try my, I'm not going to try my best. I'm going to not go into the vernal pools at all. I'm going to try not to do it at all. And I'm going to make sure to minimize my, my effects on the wetlands. Uh, and another part of my project is a bridge that I'm actually going to build. Um, and there's actually a gas easement that is going straight across my trail. And I think um, they're going to have to do something else with the trail, uh, with the pre-existing trail. But I'm not concerned with that. Um, so there's a yes. trail there now? Yes, I'm, add, I'm, I'm adding on to it. Uh, the trail continues that way. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Um, and then You're the gas doing the hashed part, right? The solid part's there already. Yes, the future future trail right there. That's the one you're, you're going to do. Yes, and then the gas easement follows right there. And I think it's Tennessee Gas, I think. They're going to come in and pretty much rip everything up. Uh, so the bridge actually has to be removable. Uh, if, you go, if you go to the bridge blueprints. Uh -huh. The bridge is going to be removable, which means I'm not going to use any cement or anything that will like permanently affect the uh, like the environment, uh -huh. uh, other than maybe like drilling one or two holes maybe, but that would pretty much be it. So it'll just sit on grade? Yes. Yep. Okay. And then uh, I believe there's one more. Yeah, this is a picture of uh, the type of environment that I'm dealing with. There's there are three pictures right there, one, two, three. Um, and as you can see, it looks like a little river, but it's kind of hard to cross. You kind of have to make your way across um, some like rocks. And this is this was actually taken like really early spring, but yeah. we had a we had a really late spring this year, so I couldn't actually really take some pictures of it yet. But it it, it looks pretty high like in the early spring, so you can imagine how difficult it would be to pass in the summer. So that's the gas easement right there that we're yes. looking at. Yes, uh, this entire thing is flagged off. Yep. For the gas easement. Okay. What's well, on the right? Is that a a stone, uh, a, uh, yeah, up on the is that a masonry stone wall up on the top right? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, there's a stone. a little lower than that, right there. No, that's right there. Is that it's a, a different wall? picture. Those are two different pictures. Two different walls, two right. different pictures. Oh. It's pretty cool. Yeah. But there, there, there is a stone wall. Not but cool for me because I <laughs> thought that was see. going up one. Okay. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I was but, gonna say what a mess. Uh, <laughs> there, there, there is a stone wall, but uh, I, Never I mind. won't touch it. Don't worry. Uh, and then the next slide, uh, this is where the bridge would be. Um, it's going right across the wetlands, but I'm not actually going to clear out anything in there, so I'll try and not affect the wetlands. What about much. up top? Up top? Yeah, well, yeah. I am going to have to cross it at least once. How are you going to cross that, though? Um, well, it's, it's not that wet there, so okay. it's, I, I won't need a bridge. No, we'll and then that's it. So any questions? So you're basically just going to be clearing brush where the trail is yes. going? I'll, I'll try and not use heavy machinery like chainsaws or anything. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll only use them as needed. I'll, I'll mainly stick to like clippers and just like uh, going in with a few boys and taking out some minor brush. All right. 
Do you leave that all there or to pick it up? Do we have a preference? Do you take the brush out? Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, Is that what we want, Jeff? I'll yeah, take out I'll take so. out big um, big like logs and sticks with me, but like little little leaves and stuff I yeah, yeah. obviously don't right, so that yeah. matter. Yes. You can make wildlife um, Snags, brush piles. Uh, yeah, you can make wildlife brush piles. With okay. Any of the stuff you can uh, spread that yeah, out. You just make a pile for just yeah. making some pile. You can make it like away from the trail a little bit. Right. You know? Okay. <coughs> the way that fisher cats have a place to hang out. Okay. Okay, I think that looks good. When are you going to start the work? I'm going to hope to start it in oh, the this summer. This summer? Yes. Okay. And then when are you planning on getting your eagle in the fall? Hopefully, yeah. yeah. Okay. I have my birthday in uh, December, so. Do you have all your merit badges? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I won't. yeah, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get it before college admissions, which are like uh, October-ish, since I'm going for early decision. But. Mm -hmm. Good for nice. you. It's a good time okay. of year. How long is it again? If I missed it, I'm sorry. Uh, I I believe it's 21. it's around like one and a half miles. Right. It's it, it's not too long. I, yeah, just uh, I'll take it to the uh, I'll let the trail coordination management committee know about it. Okay, sure. All right. Any other questions? Questions or comments from the yeah, audience? No, All right. Good luck. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate good you coming in. Thank you. Hey, spread the word. We'll write you. Yeah. We need a lot of trolls. Follow up later, okay? Okay. Thank you. Right. Right. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Five hundred new trails. All right. Do we have a certificate of compliance done? Yeah, I wanted to uh, just give you a, a rundown. We had a, a previous um, uh, exemption request a couple of meetings ago. And they also asked for a certificate of compliance. I was trying to do any research. It's an old one. It was pre-bylaw. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just trying to grab the. Uh, this is the first time I'm using the app. The new one. I usually have everything downloaded. So now I'm trying to find. I've got that in the. This was the, um, the site plan for the work. Basically, it was a it was an addition. The order of conditions did call for an asbuilt plan. I looked through building department, Concom, Board of Health. Um, there are no asbuilt plans per se. Okay, well, I mean, uh, it is from '86. Um, so basically, you've got. I was out. The, the, the site was stable. This was the one where we had the tree in the backyard and the lawn that we had to take down. This was the addition here, sort of shown on the official property card. Okay. I didn't know if you guys would be amenable to issuing the certificate of appliance without a you know, formalized bill. Yeah, formalized yeah, I think given the age, um, I think I'm okay with that. Is it the same owner? Or? Yeah, it's actually this, the applicant is. From '86 is, is the uh, the applicant for the for the addition is the applicant for the certificate of compliance. And are they selling the house? Is that the reason? No, they're... no. Just uh, I brought it to their attention when they when they submitted the request for exemption <coughs> on the uh, on the tree. You know, I was basically just just seeing if they had any old filings, and they did, and it didn't have a certificate of compliance. So I said you should probably wrap that up. Yeah, yeah. I should wrap that up. You know. Um, and it was in the order of conditions that they have the as -built. Yeah, I got it right here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking since it's the same owner, if it was in the original order, then I think it's a reasonable request to ask for it. Yes. Request for specific plan shall include an uh, as built plans noting any changes to the original notice of intent. The previous plan submitted shall be signed by the yeah, you gotta stick to that. Yeah, what do you? I mean, that's re first of all, that's recorded, right? No, I couldn't find any oh, recording. Yeah. I couldn't find any recording information. So as far as I know, I was just writing. So I was still was saying you, st you still gotta stick to it. Yeah, it looks like it's a hand 
drawn plan right there too. Especially, uh, especially yeah, given had, where it is. You would have had the existing, the plan showed uh, the existing house and then the, uh, the deck and the addition were, were add-ons. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think. What do you think? Yeah. I, <coughs> I, I think we should see what it looks like now. Yeah, given the especially its location on the pond. Yeah. And it was in the original request, same owner, so. Yeah. All right. If we can ask him for an as built okay. pond. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, the draft minutes for April 30th, 2019. Did everyone get a chance to look at those? Any questions, comments? I get a motion to approve the minutes of April 30th, please. So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Yeah, I'll abstain if it's okay. Jim's okay? That wasn't yeah. there. What's that? I think to be fair, I didn't meet him. Okay, Nation, 135 Whisper Way and 129 Wood Street. This is a continuation of the Notice of Intent to construct a roadway for a subdivision. Good evening, Good Mark evening. Arnold with Goddard Consulting here on behalf of the applicant for Whisper Way. So, um, the Commission received um, these uh, revised plans um, about a month, just uh, under a month ago, mm -hmm. um, we did receive uh, comments back from Lucas. But just now that we're before the commission, I just want to update the commission on the general plan scheme, and then Lucas will kind of provide comments and what update on what they had. So um, the project's been changed from a a loop road subdivision to a dead end cul-de-sac. So the original Whisper Way cul-de-sac kind of ends up here at the gravel parking lot. It's now just going up here, dead ending here. And then you have um, two homes being proposed um, behind the 129 Wood Street house, which is here. So instead of doing a loop road all the way around, you do the cul-de-sac dead ends there, and then you just do a common driveway, which means you can be narrower, um, lower, less infrastructure, um, up, up the existing car path, and then put two homes back here. Um, so generally, the project is in some ways is this is the same but the impacts have significantly decreased because we're no longer running sewer lines through the middle of the site um, near the wetlands we're not doing the drainage utilities um, have shrunk and been condensed so for example um, there's no uh, no work utilities or anything else even near the 125 foot vernal pool uh, buffer to this vernal pool here um, this work here has been um, tightened a little bit. Uh, we've uh, raised this um, s this structure to basically grade. So basically it's um, it's replacing at grade the existing culvert that's leaving that. You have one stormwater basin here which is outside the 125 and then um, you have um, this house remaining which is minimizing disturbance uh, impacting additional disturbance in that area. So um, we still have the replication area at the same size as before. So mm -hmm. we have um, 1759, we have two, 2488 here, 45 here, and uh, 362 here, where we're still replicating 7,000 square feet. Uh, and then we have this area here, which is the existing um, lawn area behind 129 Wood Street, which is right up to the edge of the wetland here, and then this existing field. Um, that we're going to reforce basically and restore uh, and we've um, pulled out any mitigation to leave all the natural trees that are along this frontal pool here so um, just just based on on Lucas's kind of comments and concerns about disturbance I mean it's it's just been disturbed but there's mature trees growing up there too mm -hmm. um, and so we've 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 elected to kind of remove that and just do the replication area down here which is in the disturbed area and then also reforest the uh, the meadow spaces that are closest to the wetland and the vernal pool in this area uh, as mitigation for just letting us um, basically kind of at grade rough the uh, rough, put the common driveway through, which is 
uh, 14 feet wide um, rather than a 22 foot wide road. Um, so the impacts were, were significantly decreased. So we do feel that we have a, a very um, good project here in the sense of, of minimizing um, what an alternative was, which was a loop road subdivision right. um, to this to this kind of a project here, which increases a lot of, makes the open space a lot more. It really produces clearing. It allows us to stay further away from all the wetlands. Um, which and the uh, amount of open space um, remains the same? I believe it rains the same, but basically clearing for each of the lots is, is going to be less because we're not having to clear the entire site because of the roadway and everything else looping right. through. We can yeah. now kind of build as strategically. Build, build strategically in certain areas, So, um, okay. which is nice because before you had this road going right through here, so you're clearing all of this, and now you just have a house here and a house here, and you can leave large tracts of trees actually in the upland areas. So, um, okay. And then, before you turn that over oh, for a second, um, the area up there that you're going to leave undisturbed because yep. of the, you know, large growth trees. Yep. I thought there was like some asphalt fragments. There is. It's. It tell you the truth that this whole section. There's this whole section. I mean, I suspect that this whole section is is old dump piles that have asphalt. Some sections almost feel like it's like asphalt, like piles that have almost like poured there. Okay. Um, and then it's kind of solidified, but there's you still have trees and shrubs still poking through and actually vegetating the area. So um, is there debris out there? There is, is there is some debris. I mean, there's there's a there's like a refrigerator or something in the vernal pool here. It's like a big metal rectangle thing that's in the middle of the wetland there. Mm -hmm. um, there's some metal debris. I think rate it's actually I think it's in the replication area over here. Um, so that will be cleaned out. Or yeah, we can definitely. I mean, if, I think I think if the commission's willing, I mean, we're definitely a condition. Basically, anything that's outside the limit of work can be can be either by hand or hauled by chain or something out because there's some more debris. I think right in here too, mm -hmm. dump things and stuff like that that can definitely be cleaned out okay. um, very very easily. And we're definitely willing to do that that cleanup just to to do that. But yeah. Um, we could definitely, would, you could definitely have that as part of the the replication kind of guidance with the wetland scientists if you want that there. Um, okay. Um, and we talked before, Jeff, in the original plan about all that um, construction and demolition debris getting yeah. taken it out, right? So we're still talking. Yeah, there was. There, we, right? we we thought we 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 well, th there's there th we we. We were going to do that, and that the challenge that Lucas kind of was was the concern was is you're basically it's hard to know first of all how deep it is, yeah. because from, yeah. from from what it looks like it, it literally drops into the vernal pool itself. So you could you could say okay we you, you you could remove all the material to the elevation of the water, and then put loam and seed and plant that area and, and hope that there's enough that the soil is loose enough below that to actually take other things. Um, or, or, I mean, but you don't want to go deeper. If you go deeper, then you're digging a hole next to the vernal pool. Yeah, I wouldn't think it'd be much, you know, very deep subsurface because... It's hard to know. Just, I mean, this, this it looks like a ditch. Out. It looks like a ditch right along here. I mean, this is a very deep section of vernal pool. And this, is, and this was the, this was, this area was actually one of the most productive areas from a vernal pool standpoint. But do you, does, it look like, does it seem like the area would have been, you know, somebody would have dug a pit there to I, throw I think, there? I think they dug, I think they trenched this. Because oh, it's yeah. very, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a long linear kind of section of, of trench and it's yeah, deeper so than, then. it's deeper than anything else back here. So yeah. I think it was, it was, it was, it might have been, they might have dug it out and then dumped material. I so whatever is easy to get out and I think whatever is easier in the sense of, of, of surface to debris, out, yeah. um, like metal metal parts, like yeah. again, like the refrigerator, like that. Like um, there's metal car parts and old things over here. Um, there's tires and rubber dumpings over here. Yeah, that there's a lot of tires. Um, yeah, so that's that kind of debris. I think the visual debris is. I think anything that's. I mean, it's, it's, if it's if it's asphalt on the surface, the, 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 you could. You, it's really hard to even. It's not like it's. It's not like just chunks. It's like actually like it's almost like it's. It's paved. It's, it's, it's a paved, but it's almost like it's. It's almost oh, like it's paved. Pavement? Because I think it, it was almost. I think it was extra asphalt. It was actually dumped there. Yeah. And it toned down. Yeah. And then yeah, it, yeah, it's like slumped down and then actually kind of solidified. So it's not just like 
chunks that I can easily go and grab by hand. I mean, once if if you want to do any of the asphalt removal in this area, you're gonna to have to bring a machine. And once you go a machine, you're you're destroying vegetation. Oh, forget. So that's why we were kind of like, you know what? Let's that's that's actually let's rethink that uh, that that concept. Okay, so, I think that makes sense. So <coughs> one correction: the, the amount of open space is is not exactly the same as the 24 lot um, subdivision. Um, the percentages are, are within a one or two percent. Okay. There's a, there's a section of land that's, that was carved off the back of uh, where the A and R lots were going to be. Back here. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's uh, excluded from the. Okay. That's that's going to be left as a as a lot, um, or as part of of one of, of this lot here. That's the back one. Yeah. Yeah, that's the back one there. I think. That's so the open space. But it's outside of the open space. Oh. Okay. Does so that bisect the open space or the open space on? Left side, the right side, but not right. That, yeah. So you'll see the acreage of open space is different, but the percentage is the same to meet the planning board's um, formula. Yeah, this is the yeah. So you got the open space that starts <coughs> over here and wraps around. It's here, wraps around this, I comes here, no. comes down here. And then I think it includes that, and that's that's this, yeah. that's this is the back section I think that you're talking. It's excluded right. back there. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. oh, but so it, okay. it's so 6.5 acres, yeah. and if anybody ever did anything with it, they'd have to. Well, depending on what they want, somebody wants to do with it, they'd this have to back come back here. and see you. Um, there's a wetland crossing over there. There's, there would be a crossing there to to use all of that land, um, but it's up against 495, and mm. it's. Yeah, that goes to we couldn't landlock it, and um, it didn't make it sense. More challenging. Okay. Okay, so Lucas had some comments on this, and I think I saw that you guys had respond. Provide yeah, we did. We did provide. Response again. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to look at that before the meeting. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we just got that today. We got the uh, response, but we didn't get the plan. We haven't seen the plans yet. So the plans. So the plans. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't. So I. I got hard. I got digital copies today of the new plans that just came out. Um, so they do. They do actually address some of Lucas's comments directly. So for example, um, this is actually the new plan. This. This great. Instead of being inset in the ground, as Matt had commented on, it's actually the same invert as the pipe that's leaving this vernal pool. So that way. There's no actual like before. It was going to be kind of a a, 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 a a graded area that was going to allow water to kind of trickle down to this to down to the the uh, structure. Now the structure is going to be raised. That way you don't actually have to grade that area out. Uh, instead of making a bowl, they just brought the structure higher, basically flush. So basically the water is going to pe the once if the water peters out, it'll get captured by the structure. But otherwise, that's it. Um, so we're basically we're leaving that area and, and the grading in that area identical. Um, so again, and you can see here, Chris, the, the invert is there at 417.78, and then you can see the rim elevation there. Which I'll, I'll give you, I'll give these copies to you. I mean, this is mainly just just to kind of uh, see how how the commission's receiving these plans, and um, I have a hard copy set for you, you Chris, to give to Matt, um, just so he can he can look them over. Um, but I think that was that was one of the the, the, the car comments that I was that was concerning to me. Um, the erosion control plan's been updated, showing all the erosion controls on one plan. Um, so if the commission, uh, I don't know, if, do, do you want copies of our response to Lucas, just so you have it? And um, just, and I know it's short order, but at the same time, it's just useful to have in your packets. Okay. I've got more, so. I think you've got more than we. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> you've got, did you print it out? Okay, so I don't think it makes sense to me, for me to go through the comments. Um, since you've already responded to them, unless Chris, you had something specific. Um, I, I I did speak with Matt. He did read through the June fourth response. I spoke with him before heading out to the meeting. Um, he took a quick pass. It does appear that the com some of the comments have been addressed. He'll have to obviously review the plans right. to confirm that. Okay. Uh, there were a couple points he asked me to uh, bring up to the commission. Uh, comment number one was regarding the hydrology to the vernal pools. Um, Goddard has provided a response to that. Matt was looking for documentation that supports the statement that the changes to the watershed aren't significant, something along the lines of providing an existing watershed 
swimming pool and the proposed watershed just to verify that they're not changing significantly, that would provide documentation to the commission and to Matt that there is, in fact, no change to the hydrology. Uh, and that shouldn't be that difficult. There. Uh, that would give everybody some confirmation that there should be no impacts. Um, can I just qu ask, one, ask one clarification, um, Chris, just so I know how best to, to, to provide anything else if you want on that. So this, the, 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 the plans that the commission has received do have the, the pre and post um, plans for the site for hydrology, at least from the stormwater standpoint, just so the commission can see why the way the site is set up. So you have, you have this major ridge line that goes down the site here, breaking the site into basically two watersheds. One is this watershed. One is this watershed. Now that's the combined watershed that gets down to this point down here. Um, it doesn't break out what this Vernal Pools watershed is, which is generally this area here going up to this wetland here, because this wetland feeds this wetland, this wetland feeds that wetland, this wetland goes to that wetland. Um, so the, the proposed plan is, main thing is 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 the stormwater is being captured and being directed to a place where it's going to be able to be treated so you you're basically this line stays the same except for this section of this section right here which is basically being captured by the roadway and being sent to the stormwater basin so this house location is being changed um, there is one house going here outside the buffer zone so there may be some loss of um, of runoff from this roadway that eventually gets into this wetland, um, which is really bad because it's 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 erosive and, and filling gravel. That's why the wetland that's being filled here can't even be used for application. The soils there are bad. Um, so um, from our standpoint, looking at these two plans, the the um, the slight change is not going to significantly change the the period of this vernal pool in to, to, to a substantive standpoint um, where um, we felt like that's why I just gave him the comment just because I, I needed to turn it around quickly um, but if you want I, I don't know what else beyond this kind of is, is useful for you guys to review to understand and to give us a positive determination that you feel yeah. like it's okay that's that's the question okay. I have just because I want to make sure we answer it correctly I'll relay that back to Matt. I believe he's looking for potentially the subwatersheds. Like you said, there's a small watershed around the Vernal Pool. So yep. I'll clarify that with him, and he can get in touch with you tomorrow or Thursday to yeah. so we can clarify specifically. Who wants yeah, and then and then also bring up to him the question of, I mean, do we is is there is there I mean, th there may be a small decrease because of the roadway, but is that a benefit to the wetland being actually having cleaner water because the water is not coming down this gravel road and dropping into this wetland now? It's actually being captured and treated down here, so. You may lose some water, but at least the water that's getting there is cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, that's right. that's that's the question that I have for Matt, and I want to make sure that's understood because it. I mean, otherwise, I mean, we could change the we could put a stormwater basin over here to try to balance the water out. But is that? Yeah. So let's clarify that, that's my that with Matt. I think um, the sub watersheds. Um, to Chris's point, and then if you can put together a narrative. Yep. Um, so we don't just have the plans, but we have yep. the narrative with the rationale. Um, I think that would be helpful. Right. Indirectly, Matt, I, I know Matt, Matt understands the water quality improvements, but it's also, he, he wants to make sure the volume of the water coming to that area is not being reduced to a point it could adversely affect the photo period for that pool. And yep. Fact, you know, I've had a, you know, pools drop down a couple inches could adversely affect species. Laying yep. Here, so. Yeah, I don't think, it, I, I doubt there'd be, I mean, cause, because of the activities above, we're going to be opening up more grass areas, so that the change is going to be, you're going to get more um, more water moving in certain areas, too, that's going to probably balance right. out. Okay. But that's, that, that was just that. Thank you for that clarification. Um, the other point he had was on uh, number 5C, and that's in regard to the planning quantities for the replication area have been significantly reduced. Um, we understand that the size of the area hasn't been reduced, just the planting schedule, and Matt was curious as to what the impetus for the reduction in the plants, particularly with the areas that you are now proposing on Center for Trees are not following the Mass DEP guidelines. Mm -hmm. uh, Mass DEP requires 10 to 15 feet on Center for Trees, Yep. and 8 to 10 on Shrub. Yep. Um, so 
I guess he was curious about why such a significant reduction. When we were we were re looking through the, the project as a whole. We basically re looked at the whole thing, every document, every page, trying to just rescope how the project was was proposed in consideration of what was being impacted, um, the success that would be required, and and the scope of the general project. And that's why we reduced the stuff. But if if you guys want us to go with those, we could increase. We do have quite a few trees going in that restoration area too, so we might. I don't know if, if if you felt that was adequate or is that could we possibly shave some trees off the re reforestation plan? Um, I would have to take a look at the that. details and talk to Matt. Uh, yeah, um, but I, I know there were concerns there. You know, yeah, take a look. Tree, if we're putting 50, feet on we, have, we have 53, 53 shrubs and two 53 trees and 200 shrubs going in that reforestation area. So we may. I mean, that was just the one the one thing that we we thought we were doing a little better at in the sense of of putting that a good density in the upland area there so we're going to have them even along the edge of the replication area right which um, is great I, we still want to make sure that you're meeting the full yep. guidelines following the mass dp and then replication guidelines and right now your trees yep. are definitely not doing that all right you know we'll definitely we'll definitely address that and you can go with the minimum but we always yep. recommend going somewhere in the middle because then if some die off you don't yep. have to go back and plant because you're still meeting the minimum. Yep. At the end of the day, you yep. meet the minimum requirements if you have just, just you never get 100 percent survivorship. Well, I I know that. So that's so that's my my follow up question is 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 what's the commission's expectation of survival of plantings? Because the guidelines talk about 75% um, of vegetation. They don't say plantings. Um, and the commission has that standard. I'd prefer to see that standard versus being told about that after when I come to file a COC. So if the commission has a standard for how many plantings they like to see survive, if it's they think 60% is reasonable, 50%, I mean, sometimes you get nature taking its course. I mean, I've had plantings and the woodchucks came and chewed my shrubs. Mm -hmm. And it's like I could either put bear cages around them or I could let them go wild. I mean, there's, there's two options there. Um, and the applicants like to know what their expectations are because then they construct and they plan accordingly. Um, do you have any insight on that? I mean, we don't have anything. We don't have that uh, specified. And you have the standard, you know, DEP well yeah. application right. standard. But it's yeah. it's it's so. usually seventy five percent cover, right. Right. and that includes ground cover, shrubs, and trees. So ground cover usually comes in pretty good. So depending on sometimes sometimes you get replication, you get really good shrub cover, and you're all right. good. Sometimes you have a few shrubs, you have a lot of shrubs die, and some trees do okay. It's all that. It's kind of back and forth. I mean, we do have tree canopy. <coughs> we will have some tree canopy around this replication area that's right. existing, um, but still. So when um, you follow the DEP standard, and then you know we'll talk to Matt, and then yeah. we'll do well, and, and when you get in unique situations where you're getting grouse as opposed to dying back because you didn't get good hydrology, oh I agree, or you weren't getting you know yeah yeah you know, I water. agree. So, you know, at some point, everything is kind of unique, and yep. you know, we, yep. we do try to All use right. our best judgment. Yeah, that's 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 reasonable. I just want to make sure that was understood because that's it. I, I just had I've had different responses to that question, so that's 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 good. I, I know that you, Don, have always been war willing to work with an understanding situations. At the same time, we'll definitely work our best to make sure that we have good success. And just to add on that, a rule of thumb we typically follow: if you're doing 10 to 15 feet on center. The minimum spacing would be 15 feet on center. Yep. So however many trees that requires is usually yep. what we try to get at the end of the day. So sometimes yep. we'll propose 12 or 13 on center. So if a couple die, yep. we still meet the minimum requirement of the 15 foot on center for yep. trees. Same yep. with shrubs with the 8 to 10. Yep. And then the 75% cover okay. of, of the herbaceous layer in the seed. All right. Yeah. That's usually a good rule of thumb. That's how we've done with DEP. Right. And hopefully you won't have to treat. Uh, we have a site. We have beaver activity. They've had to yep. plant all the trees because they wiped the entire <laughs> tree layer out. <laughs> yeah. Kind of replication area we did. Mm -hmm. So they're protected now. They're not getting near them. Um, the additional comment uh, Matt had was on number six. Uh, he was questioning. I know there was an invasive species management plan that's been removed. Um, yeah. We thought that was good mitigation for the project, and that that might be open something for the commission to discuss tonight. Why it was removed, and if the commission does in fact want that mitigation plan. In. I know Matt had indicated there's a lot of not weed in areas of the site, so this may be something for the commission to consider. Might bring that to the attention tonight. Okay. So that's not contemplated. That that's currently not contemplated, just because of this, this the way the project scale scale reduced, um, just the amount of the amount of effort and activity that 
that certain mitigation things require. That's why we kind of we rescale. We didn't we're not doing reforestation over there in the lawn area because we're not touching that area anymore. We're just doing here because this is where we're working. Um, we've got this, the upgraded roadway, um, which is along the primary area where there is Japanese knotweeds along the right of way there. Um, in, and in, into the wetland fill area, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure most of the wetland fill area is where the is the knotweed is on that side. So, so. Do we have any of the invasive species in the areas where we're doing work here. So you have you have Japanese knotweed within the right of way here. Um, so anything anything within the work area here it, it, that's knotweed is going to be eliminated. Um, so anything on the right of way is gone, and there is there is not weed going into the wetland, but I, I I'm pretty sure that we're going we're, our our construction limits go in because the retaining wall go in far enough that we're going to be able to at least eliminate it from this side. Um, there's there's spatches everywhere. There's a there's a cluster on this side of the pro, on this side of the road, across, opposite side of the road over here. You've got some on the halt conservation property. You've got spatches along the edge. I mean I've. There's a there's a section of knotweed that's sticking out of the asphalt, like over here. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, it's like just one, just one set right over here. That's right. The rest of them will so it'll be a fairly time. minimal effort to uh, take care of that area there. Sounds like. Yeah, it's 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 <laughs> pos. It, it, yeah, it's it's a it's 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 there's there are every, it's it's a lot of different spots. Okay. Um, that's why we. So I guess it. my thought there is rather than just eliminate the. Um, invasive vegetation uh, management completely mm -hmm. maybe you can consider um, doing it in areas close to where the existing work is taking place yep we can definitely we can do I mean so again like and there's no knotweed over here I know that okay so there's I, only we don't need to know where it all is right tonight, yeah but just if you can just uh, well, we can definitely that. we can definitely scope it out as as the knotweed in we can we can definitely try we can definitely tackle this one because I think in this situation, Chris, I think the best thing would be to, to Okay, to we don't need it. to make a decision tonight. You yeah. guys can just discuss yeah. it. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I, if I can discuss it with Matt, because I think there's there's different there's different unique <coughs> techniques I would use for each of these situations, just because of where they are. Because um, I I mean I prefer to 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 either to dig them up um, rather than as I don't herbicides are my last resort. I don't want to touch them. So if I can do, I I want to I might want to cap some spots, and dig up spots. But I think we can definitely. Deal with the knotweed in here. You okay, definitely can good. just along the road, edge of the road. There. That's good. So. That's what we were asking for. Great. So, um, if you get, can discuss that with yep. Matt and uh, with your client and work something up for us, and then I think um, was that it. Chris? Uh, there was one last point that Matt and I were discussing yesterday on this. Um, it's it's not a conservation commission jurisdiction, but I know you have a special condi a standard condition regarding requirement of all other permits prior to construction. Um, our opinion is that this will require a federal permit from the Army Corps under the Federal Clean Water Act. Um, the way the Army Corps handles projects, if you're under 5,000 square feet, you're eligible for self-verification. Mm -hmm. uh, some of you are aware. Um, however, to be eligible for self-verification, there are 44 general conditions you have to meet. Uh, that are, Some aren't applicable, but the ones that are applicable, if you can't meet that condition, then you have to go in for a formal review under pre-construction notification. Um, and I don't believe this project meets general conditions 17, 18, 19, E, and 23, which are involved with the areas where the existing pipes are and the crossings are. Okay. Can you um, list those numbers again, please? 17, 18, 19, E, and 23. I'm only bringing this up now because I I, it would be a good time for the applicant to look into this rather mm -hmm. than at the start of construction because if the Corps finds out at the construction time, then they could stop construction and deal with this outside of the CONCOM jurisdiction. So um, we're actually going through this for a developer we're working with right now. The Army Corps and EPA hate drop inlets. They actually made us do an individual permit for one we're working on. I don't think this would have to go that route because you have an existing pipe there. Yep. Matt and I do agree that protecting the vernal pools is a priority and not altering the hydrology. Mm -hmm. But if you don't meet the stream crossing guidelines or wetland crossings, they have specific requirements for wetland crossings that if you're putting any impact in and changing pipes, it has to be a minimum of believe two feet high three feet wide if you can't do that that's fine you can go get a permit to do what you're doing here but it won't be eligible for self-verification well, so, I, th I think we could so I would I would I'll, urge I'll, you to I'll, talk I'll, to the Army Corps because our opinion I have is I have well I have one nice idea but I'll let you finish so um, I we battled with the Corps on this ourselves on some of these issues and they escalated us to an individual permit but I think this uh, 
pre-construction notification would probably work in this case, but I don't see this being eligible self-verification, and we're bringing it up now, so there's, you know, when Don gets the applications, if the court needs to be notified, better for you guys to handle it now and, and get the have permit. To stop I, the construction. You right. know, and I, I think you're in a good position to easily get the permit. It's just another step to go through. So we're just bringing that to the board's attention now that our opinion is it would not be eligible for self-verification, and I urge you guys to call the core just to verify it now to save yourselves trouble later. So. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Any other comments, questions from the commission at this point? <coughs> My only comments <coughs> with respect to Matt's comments about the vernal pools, as some here know, I live on what used to be a vernal pool that, uh, as I would say, ineptitude on multiple parties has destroyed the vernal pool. So I get a little extra paranoia for things like this. And I would like to see Matt's comments addressed. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, questions, comments from audience members? Okay. So we'll continue this out. We have some more work that needs to be done. Um, Next meeting is the 18th. Is that work? That should work, yeah. You're welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Here, right? So, <laughs> okay. REC Hopkinton, Zero South Street. This is a continuation of an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation. Mark Arnwood, Daughter Consulting. Um, Considering comments about the vernal pool question, um, we would like to ask the commission if we could have Lucas come walk the site with us to review any vernal pool amphibian activity on the site. Um, that's the only note I have. Otherwise, we'd like to continue the public hearing. Okay. So you're going to continue that out to the 18th? Yes, please. We're happy to do so. However, kind of the season's over, so if you can still go houses. out and check for amphibians. There's still tadpoles and wood frogs in the vernal pools right now. Uh, potentially, so um, that'll be, we can do it. I don't know how conclusive that's going to be. Okay. It's well, there's other evidence that it's in vernal pools too. Right? Yeah, it's in not. It's not a class. It's, yeah, it's not a classic vernal pool because you've got a stream going through it. So. I mean, even though it's not a perennial stream, it you can still. It depends on what, what you have That's, around it. Yeah, we need a feeder stream, but, right? It's a, yeah, it's a feeder stream. Yeah. Yeah, that, ponds. It, yeah, that, that ponds and floods and a BBW. You can so. see though. You can see the limits of that. It, it right? yeah. If there's a stream, you can't always see. No, the limits. I mean the base. The basin. Well, there's not right. really. It's not. It's it's a flooded wetland. It's not oh, okay. necessarily a. a, a, a if it was a depression, yeah, that's classic. Well, just hold on a second. So we continue this yep. to the next meeting. Yep. Uh, so I want to. Right, sorry. Uh, Thank yeah. you. Oh. Yeah. But I agree, Chris. I mean, it's June now. It should have been done in April. Yeah. Well, I was talking to him out there. I told him we were in agreement except on the vernal pool. Our, our opinion was it wasn't. Their, their information was not conclusive to say it's not, does not meet the certification requirements. Um, I've spoken with Scott Goddard about this. We, our opinion is if, if you have an area like this, and Matt's looked at it, he feels it doesn't meet the physical characteristics that it, um, 
and the, they should have done at least two to three site visits. We're not sure why they didn't. Okay. And we'll do the site visit. We're happy to go walk it, and we'll see what we see. But I, just to jog my memory, they, 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 there's they a depression there, and that was the one that Scott was pushing back against more, wasn't it? Right, so they agreed to that. Well, there was right, nice, but it was nice yeah. wetland, so I think they went out and looked at that. Right, a few and times. They, they decided that maybe us pushing look, back was worthwhile. <laughs> well, it's actually the nice depression. Matt looked at it. He's 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 fine with the line. If anything, it's conservative. So they they, they could have flagged it a little tighter, but that's that's my guess. And same with the stream. He's in agreement that with what the stream assessment was just the frontal pool. Right. Yeah. They didn't provide qualifications. I don't even know who did the assessment. Um, one visit, and, and they can verify this with heritage. Typically, if you have a pool like this, they should be doing a minimum of two to three. We recommend three to four just to make sure there's no questions because you don't want to miss and wait till next season. Right. So. Um, okay. We'll see what. The and we also verified too with Natural Heritage the um, salamanders late late this year. They found almost no egg masses prior to April 15th. They started finding them in small numbers after that, and they went out April 22nd. So there's always the possibility salamanders if they laid a week off of other areas in the state, they could have missed them. Was that because of all the rain, or what was? They're not sure. Huh. Sometimes the salamanders lay late, and that's why you go through April and May. Right. Because yeah. some years wood frogs lay early, some years salamanders lay late. Right. right. Spade foot toad might lay once every 10 years. If you get so cold nights, you don't know. You and know. This, this spring was unusual. They right. actually, uh, Heritage was saying the salamanders were tracking that some some were actually moving during the day because the nights were so cold, right. which is not mm. usual. So, mm -hmm. the weather played this, the cold spring was a yeah. factor this year, yeah. and it could have delayed in this pool. You know, s certain pools, mm. depending how shady and things like that. Yeah. So, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Two more visits would have been ideal for them just to roll this out. I don't know why they didn't. It's a small okay. cost. Yeah. Okay. All right, Paladino, Don, 61 West Elm, yes. invalid COC. Yeah, I mean, this was another one from 86, but um, it never got constructed. The, uh, the house actually constructed like in 90, 94, 96 through DEP. So this is just to close out some paperwork where they never acted on the order and it just expired. Okay, so this is administrative? Yep, I'll just put it in the file or close it out. Okay, Egbuna, yep. exemption request. Yep. Cracking that open right now. Let's see. So, Egbuna, 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 It's got um, three large trees. I got some pictures basically right along. This is the existing deck right through here. Mm -hmm. so you get two right here and then one right at the end of the house. And I was able to go out and get some uh, site photos. So you're looking at the uh, canopy here and the, the roof line here. You've got this tree right at the, basically the edge of the landscape area. You've got second one branches right over the, right over the house. There again, it's kind of right at the right at the edge, and the third one is right here, marked right there. Are they diseased? They're no, they're, they're they're live, healthy trees. So that's why I'm bringing it to your attention. You got the tree here, the tree here, and the tree here. They're right on the edge. They're not. Even though there were other, um, um, I saw other things tagged. They're, they're telling me it's these are the three trees they they want removed. Or just because of uh, basically shading, uh, or they're hanging over the house. They're hanging over, shading yeah, it. Yeah, and it, I, I got, I've got moss this, grow. I've got his request here. Termites. So they've got concerns with it directly over the house and uh, the kids oh, in the, uh, you know, that, that section of the house. You have to knock the trees. Uh, they are so close to the house. He's got concern with the force of the weights of heavy storm. He's seen in snowfall, like you know, the branches hanging down low, and a couple of them are like right over the house. So, um, and he's just basically concerned with the children's bedrooms are in that you know rear of the house. Mm. So they were open to you know replanting you know other species, you know maybe understory trees that wouldn't become so problematic. Okay. If the, I mean, if they're amenable to replanting, you know, um, larger caliper trees, 
you know, not the little seedlings type of deals. Yeah, I mean, and you'd want, yeah, you'd probably want like an, an inch, inch and a half, you know, um, to be able to establish itself there, right. you know. Yes. So, you'd, you know, you'd look for a shade tolerant, under, you know, undisturbed tree that would that would do well. In yeah, that area. I mean, I, they are pretty close to the house, so I don't... Yes, yeah, I, mean, I don't there's really numerous, have there's numerous there's trees all, there you know, more, there are more within striking yeah. distance than these three, but as you can see, these are the three large yeah. ones right on the, yeah. right on the edge. Could yeah. you scroll down again, Don? I just yeah. wanted to see what the other pictures were. Yeah. So I was getting the corny hit because I noticed there was some, these are, um, you got some, um, tagged. Yeah, you know, so uh, I was like, I was going to reach out to them going, because so, I know I talked with the, this was the husband that submitted the application. I talked to the, um, the wife before and they didn't understand. Um, I've got this, I'm uh, sorry, let me pull up the, uh, this is from, um, we had a previous filing for the film of the house. So they're fairly new owners and obviously they didn't understand the background. So I, they were hoping, the original, they, they wanted to have you know this area cleared and put it. <laughs> in so I had to educate, edu had to educate them, you know, because they were like, well, there's, there's th these people over here have lawn, and I was sort of telling them, yeah, but the shape of the wetland, you've got wetland here that then fades off, so they have less jurisdiction on their land than mm -hmm. you do on yours, you know. So, so now I think this is in reaction to, oh, okay, well, we're not going to get a lawn, but we are still concerned with these three large trees. So, yeah. I don't know, it seemed like a reasonable response oh, to move to the New education Mexico. that they got. You know. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Everyone else? Uh, I'm more than okay with it. Right. It also helps Ten. air quality, by the way. You have all this yeah, mold yeah. spores that can't get anywhere. Yeah. I'm sympathetic flow. to add to, but yeah. it's not yeah. changing the you other stuff. It. They're replanting some trees. Yeah. Frankly, it's a health thing and a safety thing. Okay, so I think we're good with that, Don. All righty. Um, Carrier Kikos? Yeah, this just came in probably a couple hours ago. Um, wow. That's an A move. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, here we are. So, 46 Lake Shore. Yeah. Is this the uh, couple from the Ukraine? No, uh, Jared Kakos is the, is the contract. I haven't had a uh, chance to figure out um, the name truck. of the, the, the property owner, but he was able to give me some site photos. I haven't even walked the site, but he, I basically said if, if this they've they got an existing um, patio and they want to rip it out uh, because it leans in towards the house. So every time it rains, it hits and, and comes in. So they want to tear this out and just put in, um, you know. Um, that grade, yeah, yeah, that. like a brick patio thing that will have a you know a, a slope um, for them. So, so same footprint, right? Right. It might be a little little wider, but they're, they're going to jackhammer all this out, and then they'll put in um, a stone paver type of you know patio area. He's got uh, the existing uh, house existing, and he's so, yeah. This is this dash line here is what they what they'd like. So it's going to be uh, a little a little closer uh, to the lake. But basically, I was saying, if this was outside 50, I wouldn't be bringing it to your attention. But if it's if it's inside 50, I'd need to bring it to your attention. So he went out and, and measured this. So these are his measurements. Um, at finish, he's guessing it'll be around 32 feet, 31. So it's you know a little wider, but still seems like a reasonable. But it's not getting any closer. Yeah, it will be. Here's the water. Here's the oh, lake. Here's the water. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the existing slab is is right here, and they would put in a little bump out here and go right right to here. Okay, that's not that and big of a deal. Is, and it's all lawn all the way down. Yeah. So it'll stay it'll stay up on this ridge. It's not going to go down through here. It'll stay up. Right. It is the new patio. Yeah. So the new patio will probably come, probably you know, no farther than the Edge bottom of this step. Is there any worry about know the what, demolished yeah, slab? These were photos I think he took before I was asking him because I think he, I don't think these were taken today. He went out and did the sketch for me today. Is there any concern? Should I be concerned 
about a demolished slab and then a huge summer rainstorm washing stuff down the grass into the lake. He says he's going to tarp it. Yeah, that's well, what I was talking to him about. Up, right? He would, during construction, this whole area will be topped, so when it rains, no dirt. I'd, I'd prefer to see tops than to see, um, you know, like a, um, a whole, the, the grass all dug up to put in erosion control. I'd rather just have no exposed soil whatsoever. Right. You know? right. So the rain is just the water sheets off. Yeah. So time. when it hits, okay. so when it hits, it hits the top, runs off clean into the lo into the okay. lawn, clean instead of right. instead of dragging all the dirt into the into the erosion control. Right. So I, I'd said if you could. I just tarp, feared a tarp by itself might not be enough, but I would trust <coughs> you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, he, he'd even said you know because he doesn't want his base to get screwed up by rain. Right. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So. I'm like, yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna top the whole site, and I'm not gonna have any exposed soils. Mm -hmm. Then I I'll prefer trust you that. On that. All right. I think that's fine. Everyone's okay with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're good. And then, I Jim, just, Ed. Yeah. It, I I just kind of found out from. Uh, I just sent out an email to, to Jim, uh, and Ed, and Melissa's also up. So for review. Did. Did anyone go through this last year? That's this new. I'm not used to this yeah, new. Jeff and Carrie, you, uh, I did. Okay, so do you have to apply too, online? Right? But um, I did. I was supposed to do it online. Then I was having problems accessing it. And yeah. I can't remember if I Anna did, did it for it me. Or yeah, I did it online. Email and Maria. Yeah. Yeah. I think you did. So. Yeah, right. I think there was Maria involved. So okay. now I did it for Upper Charles. I don't know what that one. Oh, did oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, because it was for something. I think. All right. I tried to do it online, but it wasn't allowing me to. So yeah, I think that was you know because it was new that year and they were having a lot of bugs and I think there's so, less bugs, but I think there's still bugs. So that's why I gave you um, um, Esther in IT her email in case you don't can't can't log in or a password yada okay. yada. Did you but send a link or something? Or? I did. Just sent the email out today because I just coordinated with Maria today. So you guys planning on continuing or have you, you know, undecided? Or? How much time do I have before it's done? I think till the end of the month. The day or right, right, yeah. I mean, your term expires at the end of the end of the month. I think that you have to Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll stay on. If you'll I'll have me, I'll, I'll stay on if I'm not shot first. Wow, yeah, yeah. yeah we don't know when, we don't know, <coughs> yeah, we don't know when the Board of Selectmen are going to tally these, you know, are going to, because I don't know, it's open to the public now, right? Mm -hmm. So we might have people applying to be on the CONCOM, and if your name isn't oh, this in. Is for real? I guess. Yeah, take care of it right away, I guess is what Don's saying. Okay. Yeah, I got to go, go make some signs up and stuff and put those No, on. no, 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 no. no. <laughs> You're not running for election. I mean, if you, if you, if, if you want to continue when something yeah, happens, yeah. don't worry. Right. I mean, we'll. No, yeah, no, no, right. I'll do it. Yeah. No, we knew no, from no. the Board of Selectmen meeting last year, anybody that was an incumbent, oh. they pretty much even if they had competition, <coughs> was pretty much yeah. taken well, whoever the incumbent was, okay. you know, just because they were Is there a lot of interest though from? I have no idea. Oh. I, I just, I, and Jeff sent me the email last week and I was kind of caught off guard because I'm not used to, I'm used to them. This last year was the new year and I'm still not used to that. I'm the old dog that can't learn the new tricks. I'm still used to the old way they used to do it, you know, so. Yeah, me too, back in the 80s. <laughs> I'm just talking two years ago, you know. They would, like in April, they'd, they'd reach out to us and they'd ask, are you people that are going to report it? Are they interested? You know, so they'd want to know. And then we would say, yeah. we'd ask, and if you guys said, yeah, we would let them know they're, they're interested, and then they would schedule it themselves. Well, now right, they're, no, doing, it, now they're doing it this way, all online and, you know, just opening it up, and, which is fine. But, Do it. Yeah. Ted's I, already doing it. I got a year. No, I think never mind. Ted's all bets. set for this year. Some I think I got another year. Okay. Don, right. is that ever done? I think that's it. I think we hit everything mm -hmm. on the agenda. All right. A motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. And a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed? Aye. 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 Aye.